the one five and ninth aspect of nakshatras are important to consider and we'll tell the rules of why it is so you'll find out in a minute check your ascendant number one ascendant angle the cusp of your ascendant whatever planet is close to the ascendant especially if it is rahu ketu or jupiter are close to that cusp close to your ascendant angle that's the first rule number two if rahu or jupiter are your atma karaka we shall speak about this much later on number three if rahu and ketu are in one seven axis the first and the seventh axis Number four, if other planets are in conjunction with Rahu, Ketu or Jupiter in specific nakshatras, the focus being on specific nakshatras. And we'll deal with all the nine types of nakshatras here, really. Number five and the most important, if you have an exchange of lordship between the lords of nakshatras and or the dominance of one ruler of nakshatras, in your chart for example if you have mercury and moon exchanging lords okay and then you have mercury dominated nakshatras this will be important and if jupiter is in that particular nakshatra of mercury you see what i'm saying so you got to check which the ruler of the nakshatra is we have nine types basically nine classifications of three nakshatras each which makes it 27 so let's get into it so if you're looking at the chart, you see Rahu is 5th and ninth aspects. This is the 5th aspect of Rahu. We are taking 1st and 7th axis as an example. This is a blank chart, any chart. Okay. So Rahu, if it sits here, 5th aspect is looking at the 5th house. So ninth aspect is looking at the ninth house from the 1st. So this is being 1, this being 5th, this being ninth. In a similar way, if you see Ketu on the other side, because it's diagonally opposite, it will sit on the other side. Its fifth aspect is the 11th house from the 7th house and its ninth aspect is the 3rd house. This is how Ketu will behave. If you take Jupiter, and Jupiter if it's sitting in the 10th house for example, its fifth aspect is the 2nd house and ninth aspect is the 6th house. So this being the 1, this being the 5 and this being the 9. This is very important to consider. Why do we say so? Because now if you see 90% of your chart, whoever your chart is, wherever Rahu, Ketu and Jupiter are placed, just these three points have a dominant influence on the rest of the chart. Apart from these blanked out ones, which you see in the original color, Rahu has impact on these brown houses, Ketu has impact on these light brown houses, Jupiter on these yellow houses in our example. This is the singular reason why it's very very crucial for you to understand these videos okay and i will get into one by one one of the nakshatras after this introduction but before that we shall consider for the purposes of this study rahu is the point of focus and drive where you want to go in this lifetime Ketu as past life conquered territory or your karma which you have already learned and knowledge and finished Ketu brings all the past life into this life. So whatever you learnt experience and knowledge, whatever you are already an expert in is Ketu. Jupiter as the point of wisdom where you need to take assistance off. Okay, Consider it like that in this particular aspect. Now let's get into the nakshatras. Now let's speak of Mercury nakshatras and their cycle. Starts with Ashlesha. Look at this white triangle over here. Starts with Ashlesha. In the first pada, it goes into the Navamsha of Sagittarius. In the second pada, it goes into Capricorn. The third pada, Aquarius. The fourth pada, Pisces. Now, before we get into the details, right, let us see what mercury itself represents if you know what mercury itself represents we will know what it begins and ends a cycle of because like you can see in this white triangle mercury nakshatras end a particular cycle and begin a new one in case of ashlesha it ends the cycle of cancer and going into leo magha it again restarts with the Ketu nakshatras 
right? It cycles back. So essentially, Mercury Nakshatras, Ashlesha, Jeshtha, and Revati, what they are doing, they are concluding cycles of the Nakshatra. Okay, don't think cycle of the zodiac. Think the cycle of the Nakshatra. It begins with Ketu Nakshatras, ends in Mercury Nakshatras. It's a 17 year Mahadasha period. So if you're running Mercury Mahadasha of 17 years, you will go through this cycle of Ashlesha, Jeshta and Revati themes in your life. And or if you have Jupiter, Rahu, Ketu in this particular axis, in the apex of this triangle. Now Mercury, what does Mercury itself represent? Mercury is a young prince, is a learner, is constantly learning about things. In the mythology, Mercury is even the son of moon who has no gender. Genderless, right? Mercury, um, zodiac like Gemini with strong Mercury sense of these have also no genders in them. They can be these transgendered people, for example. Okay, they can be gays and lesbians, for example, the LGBTQ. So Mercury has a quality of sexual queerness also associated with it. You can look up many good videos on that on YouTube. But anyhow, it's a learner, it's intellect, it's absorption of intellect. Subconscious mind is Mercury. The third house and the sixth house. Everything about learning, everything about skill, everything about the intellectual absorption of energy. Moon, if you remember, we talked of moon nakshatras as emotional body. This is the intellectual body. Absorption of energy in the intellectual body is what Mercury stands for as a planet. In the nakshatras, however, because it concludes the whole cycle of nakshatra from Ketu to Mercury nakshatras, what does that signify? It tells us a story of how what all you have learned as a soul when you began the journey from Ketu and going through lifetimes after lifetimes of learning of remaining nakshatras culminating in your intellectual subconscious brain whatever you have learned as karma. Your final karmas go into a subconscious mind as Mercury. Okay, now let us see what the general characteristics of Mercury Nakshatras are Ashlesha, Jeshta, and Revati. So, these are the general characteristics of Mercury Nakshatras. Now, Mercury is a young prince, Mercury is a learner, Mercury is your intellect, your subconscious, and your conscious intellect. Think third house and sixth house. Gemini and Virgo, the rulers of Mercury, the dual sign. It is always searching in duality for answers through the lessons learnt from Ashwini to Pushya, which concludes in Ashlesha, through the second cycle of Magha to Jeshta, Magha to Anuradha concluding in Jeshta, going from Mula to Uttarapada Pada concluding in Revati. Think of this as soul learning cycles. This is the easiest way to understand this. This is a complex nakshatra, Mercury. It takes all the previous nakshatra energies and stores them as a nakshatra. Be careful, not interpret this as zodiac. Although there are commonalities, they are the ones who engage too much with relationships, relationship issues. One hint we get is because they are all in water signs, just like Saturn nakshatras, Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces in the heart of them. Also, it falls in the Gandanta, right? It goes from water to fire sign. These are the transitional aspects. It goes from Pisces to Aries, you see on the top. It goes from Cancer to Leo and from Scorpio to Sagittarius. So there is a certain burning of karma associated with Mercury nakshatras. Therefore, a lot of people, therefore, a lot of held karma in the subconscious brain. Extreme attachment to people. We shall see this in the next slide, how it ties in. 
when not knowing the directions in life as is very typical with mercury nakshatras if you have a dominance of them in your chart as per the rules i said read books read a lot of books intellectually engage the mind this is the clue how to get out of that trap because you can get really trapped mercury i don't know what i'm doing in life i need to find some direction well read books intellectually engage the mind find a teacher find a guru find jupiter okay and engage with children for comfort mercury is the karak of a children it loves children it's very child like now let's conclude up with the white triangle and what the code is so this is the final code of mercury nakshatras the white triangle beginning from ashlesha on top in cancer going to jeshtha in scorpio and going to revati in pisces i am deliberately saying the signs because once again you see movement of water like saturn nakshatras mercury nakshatras move through water signs it's all about emotion subconscious emotional body that's the best i can put it as succinctly that's what mercury nakshatras represent and like we saw it is all about people and relationships a lot of accumulated karma of previous nakshatras you might say this is what plays out as subconscious drive in mercury nakshatras let us begin from top ashlesha is protection and defense it's like the cobra it's hurt very easily very sensitive highly intuitive the nagas clingy and feel need to connect it to another there's the first relationship clue cancer being highly emotional in this mercury nakshatra becomes all about needing the partner to feel connected to sharp intellect see the mercury playing out and emotion very quick to react earth energy sensitivity cancer fourth house shedding old skin and moving through life this becomes one of their clue oh and another thing you might notice there is no exalted pada in mercury nakshatras just like mars mars also had no exalted pada if you remember introverted quiet and irritable they have a need for privacy life lesson live seductively without being seduced why this theme in curious theme in ashlesha because cancer with the subconscious mercury can become very very seductive in nature okay this is the seductive side of cancer same way it will travel to jeshtha in somewhat similar of a manner let's see jeshtha scorpio as it is it is more emotional highly magnetic jeshtha has themes of authority respect insecurity about power and authority when will i lose my throne in ashlesha the mercury asks a question what if i don't get anyone to stay with i need i feel the need to be connected to another physically to feel that emotion in jeshtha it's about what if i lose my power so emotional clinging to power materialistic growth superiority complex because now it has graduated from maga and it is culminating in jeshtha right the second cycle these people can easily become narcissistic as a result this mercury jealousy and regret what is the life lesson the rising of power by retaliation so this is the scorpion sting which comes in mercury nakshatra so this is very sharp intellectual mind plays on this any retaliatory action requires a very sharp intellect like those commanders in in the military forces right they need to plan an attack that's jeshtha that's the scorpion sting in revati because pisces it's all about letting go these are the social natives that love to help people again once again the people theme of mercury nakshatras plays out very attached to people they're very concerned about people something like elon musk kind of people prosperous background they have a healthy body they love teaching children see the children theme of mercury plays out here <coughs> and 
the need for finding nurturing love with true companions so ashlesha has graduated to revati you might say where ashlesha is needing that kind of companion revati is looking for true companions because he has faced so much of deception by now moving from jeshta that means from mula to utrabhadra pada he has faced so much of karmic life lesson in revati it searches for the true companion okay that's the way my reading is of mercury to nakshatras next probably i should be doing a series on um, atma karaka meanwhile take care subscribe share comment if you find something useful here take care